Oh, wait. He switches up. Sometimes he's Paul. Sometimes he's Pablo. He's switching it up. He's going to be, I don't know, what. what is he going to be next week when we talk about reproductive health? I don't that's know. Real I What's like, that? ah. <laughs> that's what ah. I really want to know. What? What you're going to be oh. come next week when reproductive rights take center. What you mean, what be? You want that gray blob life? Today. Well, you know, every week you come with a different getup. Sometimes no, it's like no. college students, sometimes it's founder, tech founder. What? Sometimes it's a little boho sheep. Y'all so extra. Cold struggler. What are we doing? To, what are we doing today? Are we just getting gray blobs today? Yeah, I just, I want to know. What's up? I don't know what you're talking about. Y'all so crazy. What's up? What's up? Well, let me introduce. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the After Show. I am Janine Truitt, your host, and I am joined here with my two co-hosts, Dara Morgan and Dear Pablo, who we love to pick on. What's Today, up, y'all? not with the shits, though. I- I'm feeling he's like, not with the shits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just sleeping, man. I'm just tired so it's been a long day it's been a super no i hear day. you um i'm janine truitt chief innovations officer for talent think innovations llc based here in new york and my focus is on workforce planning digital transformation and tech advisory for more information on what i do at scale you can visit me at www.talentthinkinnovations.com and i'm gonna pass the mic to my co-hosts Hello, everyone. I am Sarah Morgan. I am the Chief Excellence Officer of Buzzaroni LLC, where we focus on diversity, inclusion, benefits, and wellness, leadership programming. Um, and you can find me at the Buzz on HR and on all social media at the Buzz on HR. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Dr. Paul McNeil, uh, founder of MV Usable Security. We look at uh, taking your data and either helping you secure it or use it to make more money uh, through data-driven marketing. Um, On Twitter, I'm at UsableSecGuy. Also, websites www.mbusablesecurity or mbusecurity.com. I'm tired. I'm sorry, I'm tripping. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, yeah. Listen, listen, let's, let's, Man, wow. this is such a crazy day. It's just so crazy. Y'all don't even know. Oh, wow. Man. I was going to say something, and I was like, nah, it's Women History Month. I'm not going to start this episode and get flamed. Uh-huh. But uh, if this is how moms feel every day, salute, ladies. This is crazy. Uh, man, super crazy. Good times. Okay. You're yeah. getting a mom nod right now. Yeah, you know. You know we got we <laughs> super... Oh man, I've had, I feel like I've had like so many emotions today. It doesn't make any sense. I just was like, my goodness. Ugh. So well, much going on. It is Mercury retrograde. If that Mercury is in routine. retro. Yeah, it is. It's, it's not the kind. Not at all. Not at oh. all. It's so unkind. The technology be tripping. People don't know how to talk out their mouths. Yeah, we got it for what? Till the end of the month. Huh? So, 28. Yeah. We're, 28. we're in there till the 28th. Uh, I think it was just unexpected stuff. Like, I sold my car today. Uh, and that was more emotional than I thought. I'm not like a car person. And I was in my feelings. That was a lot going on there. I've had that car for like six years. And I was like, oh, you know what I mean? That's, so there was that. And, yeah, it was just a blast. I was just like, oh, my car. And then I didn't get to like, really say goodbye to my car properly because for some reason today everybody pulled up on early or on time which i'm not used to so like the tow people were coming and they were like yeah we're gonna call an hour out and i was like cool so i got some time to figure this out and like clear out my car and they were like yeah we're 10 minutes away what you guys are never this quick roadside assistance what is happening <laughs> so, it was crazy and then I was watching this episode of Master Chef, and I got really into it. There was a lot going on today, just a lot of emotions. It was a crazy day. I saw that Safari, uh, Safari and Erica episode on YouTube. Their little first thing. What happened? 
know, wait, wait. Safari and Erica. Oh, anyway, sorry. I'm, I'm wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay. Did you just say divorce? No, 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 no. Their episode on YouTube. Oh. Because I'm like, they got kicked off of Love and Hip Hop. And so, oh. so, yeah. So, you know, Erica already got fired. So, apparently, last week or whatever, they fired Safari because uh, Safari wouldn't pull up to the finale shooting of the, you know, the oh. reunion. And so, they fired him. And so, it's basically both not going to be on any Love and Hip Hop stuff. So, in response, yesterday, they started a YouTube channel called She's Crazy, I'm Not. And they put the first episode where they're on a couch uh, talking about relationships and how they ended up together and, like, what men and women should do to find their true love. And I was like, we're not about to pretend like y'all are the epitome of healthy relationships just because y'all figured out how to use your cell phone and upload a video. Like, I'm mad. Anyway. I'm, I'm but mad, I'm, but I'm mad. I digress. Well, I'm disappointed that they got fired because I just knew that they was going to cash in and get their own spinoff show. That's so, what I thought. But, and but I don't even watch. That's what they did on YouTube. Basically, they're basically about to do that on YouTube, it looks like. And so now I'm wondering if that's going to come at Mona's pockets because I'm like, if they even kind of get successful, how many of these other reality people are going to be like, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and make our own channel on YouTube. Yes, but if that happens, this yeah, is but if perfect that happens, for innovation Mona, right here. Uh, it is. Mona is a smart businesswoman. If that even looks like it's about to happen, she'll she'll adjust. And she's not like she hasn't done it before. That's how Erica recommend it. I ended up back on Love and Hip Hop. So she know how to get her coins and make her deals. I'm not I'm I'm going I'm gonna put my money on Mona to land on her feet in this one. Assuming <laughs> Safari and Erica even make it. Like Back to this whole healthy relationship thing, <laughs> like, like yeah, I'm rooting for them. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I am rooting for them because something about their strangeness works for me. But neither I, one of them have successful track records. So this is, you know, they they more than like, you know, I feel like they go future episode of Ayala more so than, a, than a love and hip hop spinoff. <laughs> I, I agree because they were like, you know, oh, so far as like, I didn't think I was going to get married and I didn't think I would find love. I had just given up. And I was like, bro, every episode of any show that you're on. You're always in love with somebody, sir. Like, stop this. He was over there sounding like, uh, I was, after I watched it, I started playing E40's uh, Kappa Save a He was sad and super Save a Oh, no. That's just, it was kind of real. I was just say it. That's how it sounded. Wow. And I was just like, because he was like talking. He was just like, you know, the way and she said, how, what did she say? He said he knew that he belonged in her life when he saw her TMZ on her on TMZ with her mugshot on TMZ. And he was like, yeah, I need to be in her life so she can make better choices and stuff. Now, if that's not textbook, I'm just yeah. saying. Anyway. He put a cape on uh, and swooped on there. Yeah. And I was like, and then he was like, guys, you know, just look at what I do and, and just do what I do and treat women. I was like, nobody's trying to get punked by their mans and then cry on Angie Martinez. Nobody wants to be like you, Safari. Stop oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's my little social media <laughs> for a while. Let's jump into innovation. I'm sorry. This wow. Is, like I said, it's been a lot of emotions. That, yeah, the after show uh, is lit. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I don't know what after show we have. I'm jumping in my lane. I'm jumping in my lane. Women wow. are awesome. Wow. Dr. Neal loves and supports women. I believe that they are awesome, amazing, creative people and uh, innovation of women. Yay. You're hilarious. Sorry. So, you know, mm -hmm. since you're talking, oh boy. I'm going to just come straight for you. Let's go. I'm out here. So, I don't know if you jumped in on the show at the time that I was sharing the Ink article. Um, which I'll repeat, it was why we need women, why we need women to have larger roles in innovation. And they had talked about like these four attributes that they felt were distinctly women kind of characteristics and why we deserve a, a chair at the table, the proverbial table. Um, right. so I'm curious from your perspective, do you, I'll, I'll repeat what the attributes were. Um, you about to get me in better trouble. listeners. You said they're what? We're good listeners. Okay. Um, quiet geniuses. 
We possess social sensitivity and we're great collaborators. So in your opinion, do you believe that this, that is truly kind of the embodiment of what women bring to the table or is it in your opinion fluff? Like do, is, is it kind of on both sides or are you feeling like, nah, yeah, that's kind of our value add. Um, all right, can you repeat the four things one more time? So sure it's, we're, we're great collaborators, it. we're good uh -huh. listeners, uh -huh. quiet geniuses, and we uh -huh. possess social sensitivity. Definitely agree with social sens sensitivities. Um, uh, not so sure about the quiet part of quiet geniuses, but I feel like there are a lot of geniuses who are women. I don't know that they're always the quiet. Um, and then as far as collaboration, I, I think, I mean, I think those are some true value adds. I mean, I think there are a lot more. I feel like that's kind of a super oversimplification. It was a short uh, You said, you said, short, okay, okay. All right, that's fair. Yeah. All right, cool. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think uh, when it comes to doing stuff in these tech spaces, at least in, in my world, the tech spaces and, and things of that nature, it's always pretty much been a bad whenever I've worked on teams and there have been women involved. Um, difference of perspective, uh, crazy ability to multitask, things of that nature. Um, collaboration, I think that depends on how they were introduced to whatever in innovative space that they were in. Mm -hmm. um, I find that sometimes if women were introduced to, for instance, like in tech, if they were in, introduced in a very hostile environment and then they, they go very, very, very overboard on like overcorrecting to make sure that you know that they belong and stuff like that. So like, even if you're like, hey, I got you, like I'm not whoever it is that hurt you, like I'm cool with it. Sometimes it can be a little overboard. Um, or like same with like sometimes um, I've had uh, women professors who um, made it through the ranks probably like in the 80s and stuff in computer science. And now it's 2000 and something and they're just unnecessarily intense. And sometimes it's to the point of not being happy. So sometimes that's a little interesting to see. But um, always super creative. Uh, great listeners. Again, I think that just depends on personality because I know a lot of uh, women that are horrible at listening. Um, just period, let alone as innovators. And uh, but yeah, I, mean, I stand by it. You know, rock out. Ooh, and then that's not even going minority. Month. That's just like women in general. I mean, you it's go minority, be a long month. maybe a little different spin. But uh, all right, cool. I'm out. <laughs> y'all are smiling too y'all are like wow he's doing really good but I need him to say one thing and we're gonna light him up nope safe I came ready today wow I feel like you really practiced that I did it it was so hard working. which is what makes it so awesome from the whore I can't even deal my answers next week will be rehearsed and timed. It's gonna be awesome. But oh. uh, this, that was off the cuff. You gonna bring the gelato back next week? I yep. got already he's gonna bring the gelato back. I'm bringing the gelato back. I'm bringing canned answers back. I'm bringing back the sketched out pictures on my phone of staying in my lane. Oh, we're ready next week. Mm -hmm. We're ready next. Women reproduction, uh, definitely. I have whatever opinion fits the woman. See, I'm already ready. You know what? Women have the right to decide what to do with their bodies. Okay, continue. That's that's literally gonna be my repeat next week. Sarah, I can't. <laughs> that's a preview, everybody. That's a good answer, but we're gonna have to peel back a layer too. Oh, that's we cool. Is that every layer? Go for it. Oh. <laughs> we, we, we'll see. We'll see. Right. All right. I mean. I don't know. I always, I think I struggle sometimes when they, they put these attributes up, I guess, because I tend to look at people in terms of spectrum these days. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So like there was a time that I definitely felt like this was woman stuff and this is man stuff. And that was what, but now I feel like it's more spectrum um, because not all of us are, you know, warm and fuzzy. 
<laughs> necessarily. Um, I, I, okay. I didn't really need you to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't need to post on that. You can just let that go. But mm-hmm. I support correctness. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if I'm fair, you know, I, I've had quite a few women leaders in my time, and you know, they they left a lot to be desired. But it kind of goes back to the stuff that I was talking about in terms of when you are oper- operating from a marginalized perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're just, you're going to just start mimicking what you've been taught. Whoever raised you up is what you tend to exhibit. So I think what we've seen is, you know, women who didn't feel empowered to step on the scene being themselves, like whatever that is, Mm -hmm. um, and and feel like they've got to have a more dominant way about themselves. You know, it's kind of like what we were talking about a few shows ago about how as an alpha woman, you know, sometimes you have to actively walk yourself back to femininity and understand that there's strength in that versus you trying to embody this like super masculine energy. So that's exactly what I said last show. Yeah. So you, I mean, you have women who, you know, are basically doing what men do, um, but that's not what our strength is. I mean, ultimately that's, that's not the hope. The hope is to get away from that it doesn't look good on us, number one. Um, and two, we don't, we don't do it well. Um, there's something about when a man kind of walks that, that line that you, you're like, okay, you know, you expect it. Um, you may even resonate with it. But when a woman does it, there's just something so very wrong about it. Like, why are you such a pit bull right now? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's conditioning, though, because when you look at, like, a, um. I was doing research for an article that I'm working on for Black Enterprise about male allyship. And that was one yeah, of the drops. things. And that was one, yeah, let me. <laughs> we see and that was one of the, whoosh. <laughs> that was one of the things that came up quite a bit that when you look at, um, you know, the early works that told women how to function in business from the 70s and early 80s, everything told women to be like men the best-selling books for women at that time were all telling us to be like men and even and that continued that that continues now I mean look at Steve Harvey's rise to fame with you know think like like a man and I mean they still tell you that Mm -hmm. and it's not but then it's then you get there and you're hard because you're mimicking something and and when you mimic something it always ends up exaggerated you know when you repeat back to someone what you heard the echo is always louder than the original voice so yeah you're gonna come harder with it and then people are upset like where did this come from Mm -hmm. um no that's where it came from so and the the answer is to allow the spectrum to allow people to show up you know as fully human as they want to be your mature professional self Mm-hmm. But what? But that? But allow that, that seem different things, and allow that to be on the spectrum of of humanity, wherever it is that it needs to be. I think we're just now getting to the point where we really understand that, and are willing to entertain, start to entertain the ideas of accepting people that way. But to your point, Janine, from the show, I still think we're a solid five to ten away from seeing that fully actualized um, in the major- vast majority of our workplaces because we're so, it's also steeped in white, male, able-bodied, heterosexual, Christian. Mm-hmm. Am I, did I miss any? Um, so it's also steeped right. in that, that shaking that loose is, is going to be very, very difficult. And until, and I think it'll probably be our children's generation where you really see it not, fingers crossed, Jesus, <laughs> but yeah. um, where you really see it not make a difference. But I think for us, um, we'll start to see, I think we're starting to see the shift, but I think you'll see it more readily um, with this with this next generation and the, the, the little kids who are like tweens and teens now. Mm-hmm. I think that that'll be they'll look back on in the eighties and be like, "The fuck was y'all doing? Like, why was y'all putting people through all of this?" Facts. Um, 
literally yeah yeah they'll be looking at us mad crazy for the stuff that we put people through the way that we look back on you know the 1960s even though today sometimes feels like the 1960s um but the way we look back on those those sorts of things they'll they'll think is nuts and I'm you know I look forward to that I hope I'm not still working because I'm trying to be you know I'm trying to be I'm trying to be retired I hope I'm not still working but I do look forward to to those kinds of of stories Mm -hmm. yeah I I think and and I think um maybe I had this conversation with one of you a little while ago maybe Janine when we were talking about um, the VC game and investors. And I think that that comment you said regarding marginalized, like how you behave um, for coming from our marginalized communities, I, I see that kind of similarly there as well. So you have a lot of minorities who are finally getting to be VCs, but they're looking at these companies and investing in the same way mm-hmm. as when, you know, as if they weren't the ones who were managing the money anyway, because as right. you said, you know, you're doing this learned behavior, so you're emulating, and so then you're just as hard as your own community. And I think that that was one of the, that's one of the things that I've noticed in terms of um, with innovation and, and working with women. Um, oftentimes, uh, women are not always great collaborators with other women. There we go. That's, that's how I say that. Oh, uh, uh, there's not always. That, no, I've seen it be great, but like you know that whole too many uh, cooks in the kitchen type situation, or uh, uh, sometimes there are. I mean, and and I think again, it's a result of the mar- being marginalized, and and similarly in in the black community, we have that as well, where we don't buy black. You know what I mean? Like unless yeah. it's cosigned, right? You know, I find that there's. And this may just be something that happens among marginalized communities, but I find mm-hmm. that there's kind of that situation where you look at, okay, prime example, like the last election, a lot of, uh, of uh, the people who voted for Trump as opposed to Hillary uh, were, were uh, people that look like Hillary. Um, uh-huh. But... You know, if you you grow up in in a society that doesn't teach you to support your own, maybe you you don't know that you a hundred percent trust your own to make moves like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, you're on to something. You're yes. on to something. I'm not gonna yeah. pretend like you're not. We just watching you. We like watching mm-hmm. you squirm as Susie, listen, Susie, listen. <laughs> 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 listen, here's the reality, man. I don't want 20 years from now, people are out here, Kevin Hart and me with the Oscar. So I try to make sure that I, I you want to make sure that you host the Oscars. <laughs> I don't, it might not be the Oscars. It might be something else. They'd be like, no, we checked you out on YouTube 20 million years ago. Uh, yeah. the, the cycle will pass by then though. This we're, we're, in, so. we're, we're firmly I in the social. So. I just mean. like playing around. Like I really, but, but in all seriousness, I think, I think that that's something that I've noted in terms of collaboration. Um, you know, but it's I, like, I think that really I, I has to, I think that really does have to do with the conditioning of marginalized people. Yeah. We're taught, we're conditioned to, to believe that there are not sufficient resources. We can't all make it. Um, yep. You know, er, you can have multiple brands of white bread, but you can't have a whole lot of wheat bread. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you only get that Pepperidge Farm wheat bread. Shout out to <laughs> Pepperidge Farm. <laughs> I like I like the <laughs> 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 We look at responses. But you know, when you start to get into to the marginalized people, we're just conditioned to believe that you know, and then the the, the we start to tokenize and differentiate ourselves across lines of like, who, you know, well, you're exceptional. And, you know, microaggressions and those sorts of things start, start to come into play. You end, up, you end up slightly brainwashed. It's a, it's really a form of Stockholm syndrome when you step back and you think about it. Yeah. And yeah. so you end up brainwashed and then you start to identify with your oppressor and you start to mimic the things that they do. Um, so yeah, you're you're definitely onto something. People of color do it, women do it to one another. It always is interesting to me to what, and I'm not. This is not me throwing shade at you, but it's always interesting to me to see men 
people and or white people throw that back in the face of women and people of color as though y'all didn't create the circumstances which made that necessary for us. So it, like what you doing, like you identifying it as a problem, like you didn't create the problem and like you can't uncreate the problem Facts. if you choose to. That's where, um, that's where it kind of gets lost. So it's this, the, this idea that we did this to ourselves mm-hmm. and not that this was done to us by men and by white people who, who did not want to include women, people of color, women of color in the con- conversations at the table anywhere um and so now all of a sudden there there's this surprise like oh how could you possibly treat each other that way are you serious Mm -hmm. Uh, that's where that's where it loses me so yeah yeah uh you know i'm always down to collaborate with women just saying uh paula and b is secure.com just saying all right i mean you're definitely on (laughs) i mean there's definitely a cattiness that exists, you know, among certain groups of women. But I've also found, again, in that realm of elevating yourself, you know, again, you attract your vibe, mm-hmm. your tribe with your vibe. So, yes. you know, if I've ever, enc- I'm not saying that I don't encounter women that have that vibe, but they're far and few in between now. I feel like I'm in a much more collaborative space now with women that want to do that than probably ever before in my career but it takes some time to figure out what that right formula is for you in terms of your friend circles and acquaintances circles and you know what have you but you know it's definitely there um and then when you talk about like the dynamics between you know women of color and and white women that's a whole nother oh, back of tricks in and of itself, it's whole show but, unto itself. Yeah. you know, it, it's, whole show. it's all just, dis- it's all smoke and mirrors, you know, I mean, in, in my head and most women of color's heads is about maybe, I don't know, 0.5 to 1% of white women that we feel really have our back or white people right. in general, not more That's than true. that. Um, and we, you know, and so beyond that 0.5 to 1%, we don't trust them. We just don't, you know, we, we got to work with you. We got to collaborate with you. We got to live in communities with you. Um, but when it comes time to sprout a grassroots movement that is going to benefit us, I don't know that I'm, I'm looking across the aisle for you. Um, and I think that that sentiment is growing um, as we move into the 2020s. So Mm, because of what you said about that last election you know so there's always there's this thing you know that we all talk about where it's like um it's only it's only a cause when it affects white women you know um so it's like then you get the the women's marches but when our our sons and our husbands and our fathers and whomever else are being shot in cold blood how often do you see a white woman cross over into the hood and come hold our hand and hold a candle and, and, and sit vigil, right? It, you've never seen it happen. Uh, uh, let's not forget about Rachel Dolezal. Continue. I just, I just want to just, you know, throw it out, out there. Continue. She was out there holding hands, breaking bread with the brethren. I'm just saying. Well, we she's also what, they, what they've now deemed a transracial, so whatever. Mm-hmm. She out and she out here fucking it up for real light skinned people. So you know. fuck her, fuck her lying ass, right? Listen, fuck her listen, listen, for, listen, for listen, having awesome. my shit be questionable. It's a spectrum, Janine. Racial spectrum. Yeah, I mm, guess. I, mean, no. I guess. <laughs> but it's you a know, spectrum. it definitely is. I mean, it's it's definitely a brainwashing mechanism um, because you know, the, 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 the companies at the top, you know, the companies that are driving the GDP are competitively partnering and have been for years. Mm-hmm. This is how they've, been, they've managed to keep themselves afloat because if they didn't do that, they would have been out of business a long time ago. So I would say like around 2010 is when I started hearing pretty much on the ground, like, yeah, everything is competitive partnerships. It's like, I'm still going to compete against you, but I understand you have this leverage in the market and I have this leverage in the market. And so 
where that meets, we're going to come together and do something, but we're still going to compete. So it, it's interesting to know that those things are happening and that's how some of the innovation we're seeing is being sprouted, yet you know, the, the overarching message to marginalized people is you can't have it all. Gotta watch her. Gotta watch a Sarah Morgan. She might be coming for your lane, Janine. Or, you know, and Sarah that's how Morgan, we ended watch up, out. Yeah. There's the Zari. That's how we ended up friends. You know what I mean? How, yeah. So, yeah. Because that's we. That's how we ended up together. Correct. When Janine but, started blogging. I can't tell you how many DM messages and emails that I got talking about, you know, you gotta watch. You gotta keep an eye out for this one. She's coming for coming for your readers I was like oh she is let's get on the phone and let's start figuring out how we gonna collaborate we're not gonna not be friends like we not gonna not know I'm gonna retweet her shit I'm gonna share her shit she's gonna be on my blog I'm gonna be on her, her blog yeah we're gonna work together we're gonna show up on the same damn social media teams on the same damn panels you looking for somebody this who you looking for where it, we wasn't playing those games and have not played those games with other people. Um, and I think there is, when you buck that system, the universe will reward you because that's the way that it's supposed to be done. That's the way it was always supposed to be done. Correct. So you create, you know, you create. Everybody eats B. Well, I Everybody. mean, right. It, I mean, it, it just, it just works. I, I don't think I've ever collaborated I mean, there's certainly been some shady characters, but that never bodes well for them either. You know, you got the occasional one that wants to come and be like, hey, can I hop on a call with you? And you're like, oh, yeah, sure. And they busy picking your brain for one thing after another, and then you never hear from them ever again. They drop off, Facts. and then they on Facts. some shady shit. Like, yeah, it happens. Yeah. But you know what? I don't even worry about them either because that's not sustainable either mm -hmm. you know like whatever little i might have given you on a phone call isn't enough for you to sustain yourself and do even a quarter of what i do so rock mm -hmm. out <laughs> like well. you know but yeah i mean i i don't i wouldn't say that we're we're great at doing it um you know this whole collaboration thing but i do see a movement towards that changing for sure um but it's largely grass i think when, when we're yeah, and I think when we're in our natural, and you talked about this too, this natural homeostasis, when all things are in balance, Enos. I do think, yeah, I do think, say, hey, snap it. I do think that we end up being, I do think that women are more naturally inclined to it. I think, you know, we're socialized to be more cooperative. And so when we, that translates well for us, usually more often than not in the workplace um because we're conditioned that way and so when we're allowed to to blossom naturally um those things do tend to to show themselves more so often in the cattiness and that may just be me i've had generally good experiences working with women and having women that's workers. a lie what's a lie <laughs> no as have i i have oh, okay. had I mean, I mentioned it because I've heard, and I don't know you all, I would love to hear your opinion on this, but I often have really great experiences working with women, right? I don't really have to deal with that. But then I hear from maybe some of my other um, friends, they'll say, well, that's because you're a guy. Women will work really cool with guys. It's when, like, this work girl, uh, lady works really well with you, but when I go in and work with her, because I'm also a woman, it becomes an issue. And so that was kind of one of the, where my initial observations kind of came from. It was brought to my attention by a woman. Mm -hmm. And it was like, when I work with this professor, she's just horrible to me, da 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 da, da. When you pull up, everything is roses and creams and all this good stuff. And it's like, this is a completely different person than what I see. I get different kinds of vibe interactions than you do. And um, that's kind of how, what put me on. I was like, oh, this is like a thing, okay yeah <clears throat> I, I mean again i'm trying to think back i've had about four or five women um bosses leaders each of them the spawns of devil the spawns of, of this, this, oh, this 
just har- no, no, really, just horrible. Just insufferably mm. horrible. Mm. I mean, the depths to which they would go to try to make my life miserable on a day-to-day basis, it, it's actually something to behold in hindsight now that I'm out of it. At the time, I was walking around with Bibles and Psalms trying to make it through mm-hmm. the day, mm-hmm. but <laughs> I could talk about it more tongue in cheek now. I mean, it just, yeah. and so for me, you know, my, my, my general kind of like, uh, I guess observation of the situation was like, yo, women will go to the deepest depths to destroy you. Yeah, they because will. I'd had, yeah, men, yeah. you know, bosses. no, really, I'd oh, had failed bosses who I didn't particularly care for, but I felt like it was more so like, you know, they said their piece and then they were done. Whereas the women, it was like, how could I stick her today? And how could yep. I stab her oh, today? Yeah. And can I get that organ today? Like, you know, how may mm-hmm. I sacrifice yeah. her <laughs> to my underlord today? It was just unbelievable. Um, and yeah, was- I would agree with that. I didn't find that in the women that I had leading me, but absolutely in terms of, of coworkers that that has been peers you know that has been my experience from time to time um and that all that I always find that to be super unfortunate but you know you you figure it out and do your best to rise above and then I've learned to you know keep receipts and be petty so that's helped me out too I mean at least one I considered catching a case for at least one See, like I, and- I literally it's the fr- I'm not a violent person, but like she used to do shit like call me to her office and then for like a meeting and have me come with like all my shit and then turn around and be like, Yeah, I'm busy after I walked like across the whole corridor oh, yeah. like shit like that. Oh, and I'm I promise oh, you ridiculous. I don't even give a shit how unprofessional this sounds, but like it's one of the first times in my life that I really thought I will wait for this bitch after work when she comes out and I'll just drag her on this fucking concrete for real. And then oh, we'll see how much you want to be calling me from my seat to do this kind of bullshit. Like literally I, I was like, I'll just, I told my mom, I remember she was like, Janine, this is not healthy. <laughs> so leave the shop. But it was just like, I was like, you're right. You're right. But I'm like, mommy, I will drag this bitch. <laughs> but I'm a dragon though. Like if she keeps fucking with me. I I'm love that you have the kind of relationship with your mom where you'd be like, but mom, I will drag this bitch. <laughs> That's the best. He's like, this is not it's even you. I'm like, but it is me though. And if she does one more thing, you're going to get a phone call. <laughs> that is hilarious. No, I, I, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's it's interesting to hear these kinds of stories because the other the other thing in terms of talking about this, and you kind of, kind of touched on a little bit, Sarah, earlier was like as a guy, if you say certain things, you're like, okay, it may come from a you know a, a position of privilege, but there are some women that I've I've you know had either in leadership or on teams, and they're just horrible people, and they're like, oh, you're just saying that because she's a woman. And if she had, you know, something between her legs, then it would be, a, you know, you would just say she was a tough person and an innovator and you're just caught thinking, I was like, nah, I would still call her a jerk and all these things that she was a dude. She just does horrible things. Why are you doing this? Why do you move like this? Like, where did this come from? Um, and so it's interesting to hear, hear these cases where it's like, yeah, okay. It can happen to you. I mean, there's going to be a balancing you know, of the minds. Like I mentioned on the show, I think, I know a lot of men don't like to hear when we pump our fists and say the future is female, but it's, it is what it is. I think that's where it's headed. We've, we've tried the masculine way. It's failed in so many different ways. Um, And so I don't know, you know, in this, in the realm of testing different ethos, I feel like the next thing is to test the female way right and I, I don't say that not understanding that there's bound to be some sort of landmine 
that we find out about, you know, women in our styles. Like, I'm sure there'll be something. Um, but we can't go too much left trying it this way after where we've been, you know? So I do see, you know, 20, 30 years out, this being more of a feminine driven thing than male. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's my. It's long overdue. Like the pendulum has to swing back the other way. That's, that's just how the universe works these things go this way they got to go back that way the 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 balance the homeostasis this is usually somewhere right in the middle so we've been on this you know high of masculine driven values for so long let's let's bring this thing on back and see what happens we it can't get no worse so mm. we might as well let's just give this thing a shot young jay-z said that that Ivy and her friends are going to be running the world in the little, on one of his music videos. So who knows? Maybe he sure did. Jay Z said it. You know who knows? Maybe then it must be right. No, I didn't say that. I just said who knows. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Who knows? Who knows? All good, I guess. I don't know. No comment. Really though, but does it irk your? Are are you one of those? Does it irk your soul when women get on the feminist thing? I wonder. Um. Does it irk my soul when women get on a feminist thing? Um, maybe because I've been in academia for a really long time, or I was in academia for a really long time, so a lot of the women I was around were on a super feminist kick. I can, uh, like, it's not, I think what bothers me is, um, what will bother me is maybe, maybe the execution or like the way that they move about it, not necessarily some of the principles. So like, I would always joke like I'm a burgeoning feminist, but I'm probably not really a feminist. But you know, I there are a lot of things that I agree with that movement. Like I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then some things I think are a little excessive, but there are things that I think are a little excessive when you look at, uh, you know, the black civil rights movement as well. You know, some of the whole tapping and stuff. I'd be like, come on, bro. I'd be like, ah, oh, elevate your third. Ah, oh, brother. Uh. I'd be like, come on. This is <laughs> you know like, you know what I mean? So um, I think I'm just a person for uh, moderation a lot of times in most things in terms of like different views and stuff like that. So um, any kind of extremism usually is a turn off for me, whether it's feminist or not. So it's just, I mean, but I don't, I don't know. I th I would say case by case. It just depends. But so I can have a We have a Thanos in our midst. You said what? We have a Thanos in our midst. You have a the Thanos. The balancer of all things. Where's yeah, your you stones know. at? Yeah. I I mean I I can I can have conversations with people and and then I think also with for me anyway my mom was very educated. My mom did the stay at home thing for like seven years, but my mom also worked for part of my life. So like, I've literally seen a woman do whatever she felt like doing. There are times when my mom made like way more than my dad. There are times when my mom wasn't making anything. And so it's just kind of like, okay, well, what do you want to do today, mom? Oh, that's what you're doing? Cool, I guess women do what the freak they want to do. All right. Like I didn't die, I was still clothed. Like it's like, okay, everything will be good. Okay. If mom is like working, I'm still cool. If mom isn't working, we're still cool. All right, you know? So I think that plus my personal education and industry experience is like, I, some of the things that I feel like guys get threatened by, I'm just like, why, why does it, like, it's not that big a deal. But then there are other things where, and this could be male privilege where I hear um, coming from a more feminist angle, I just be like, I didn't really think this was that deep. But, you know, I'm speaking from, from my view, so I just try to listen to everything. So I was looking as long as you're not being, from under her glasses. <laughs> look, as long as you're not being, as long as you're not being extreme, I think I can, I can have conversations, which we talked about. I'm curious for it. I'm just curious for an example of extreme. That's why I had to. Of an extreme? Oh, most definitely not sharing that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing. I knew you all would want one. So while I was talking, I was trying to think of an example 
of a, a case where I was just kind of like, word, like this is what we're doing, but I can't think of one right now. So if I think of one, I will share it. I mean, what's gonna happen here? I've already put my feet in my mouth so many times on the show and we're only on episodes, this is eight, nine, like why stop? This so, is no, but um, Ooh, yeah, we out here. Nine. Right? We almost yeah, got two I mean, hands out here. You know, for me, I mean, by, by default, I guess I'm a feminist, you know, if you want to talk about it in that sense. I don't, unlike you, I don't mind, I don't mind extremes. Not that I want to live in them, but I don't mind extremes because it, it makes me expand my line of thinking. That, you know what I mean? So good, bad, or indifferent, it's like, oh, that's a different perspective. Okay. How can I make that make sense? Or maybe there's nothing to make sense of, but at least I have it tucked away in my belt for a later debate. You know what I mean? So I don't even mind that. But I guess the problem I tend to have um, with the whole feminism thing is, is twofold. Two, that one that like not all rules around what a woman deserves or what would be fair for a woman apply across the board for all women, right? right? It's it's largely skewed towards the white woman. So so right there, they've lost me. Um, and then two, I tend to not be the whole on, on the end of the spectrum where it's like obliterate men and we'll just live like on an island of Amazonians um, and, and be happy. Like- Oh, there's an Example of extreme right there. There you go. Like, I think that that's super trash. I was like, come on, guys. Because, I mean, there's there's a legitimate oh, camp and subcamps of women who feel this way. Men are trash. They're horrible. And we should just get rid of them like yesterday and, and everything will be better in, in the world. Yeah. So that would be an example. Um, yeah. Right there. There you go. I just don't know how I... I feel about that. I mean, men are trash. There's no fucking. I mean, uh, for we're, sure. We're not gonna there do you it. go. I, I but see you We're not doing that. Not to see no, that. Fucking trash. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. I mean, yeah. given the shit that we've seen, you know, the now that the veil is lifted, trash. Pure, un, unadulterated trash. But we love you, though. We do. Um, I do. Two things least. can be true. You can yes. be trash. <laughs> and, and we can still love you. Can we agree yes. that people are? Can we agree people are trash? Because it's a lot of, of women out here that just aren't getting caught yet. That's all I'm saying. Caught doing what exactly? Whatever. Trash things. Like trash trash things. Trash like, things. What I'm are saying. these trash things you see? What are trash things? Do we even have rules anymore? Remember, we did a whole show on on taboo mm -hmm. acts of love. So, like, you're right, you're right. We did do a whole show on taboo acts of love. Uh, my and whatever my, we doing, y'all probably did it first. That's what I just said. Okay. That you know, I mean, a lot of people is that listen, echo. Listen, alrighty listen, now. Listen, I'll be back. You know, we're gonna get into a that's a whole different conversation because now we're egg and chicken. Uh, <laughs> and then you gotta start talking about your your relief based system. And how you really believe the world came to be all oh, there's a lot going on there. We're not going I'm not going to all that right now. But I will say I will say um that uh you know, like I said, extremes I, I'm kind of like I can hear and have a conversation, but for me, you know, the extreme streams things kinda I'd be like, eh, come on. You know, yeah, everybody, everybody's trash. Uh, and then to your point, Janine. That was like the most about. male privileged thing you've done in this entire <laughs> <laughs> just, All trash matters. All, hey, listen, all trash listen, matters, listen, really. Listen, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I will I will all trash matters this conversation. Uh, yeah, just, but that but, was the most male but, privileged thing. I, I wanna add night. that I'm I'm only here in the capacity to learn from other humans. I'm not really a human. I tell my kids all the time, I'm just waiting to be beamed back up. So I'm not part of that. I'm just <laughs> throw that out there. But but I will say one of the things as as a guy that's definitely maybe male privilege or something that's confusing about like I guess feminist movements and things of that nature is um as you said, like there are a lot of different definitions of things. And so it can be very confusing. Um and I use this as an example and this is what's gonna get me flamed, but it's fine. 
Uh, when you get go your glasses something simple ready, like Aaron, get your glasses ready. Yeah, get them ready. Get them ready. Here we get, go. I'm ready. With, I'm ready. But with, dating, we, we got. Right? <laughs> with dating, as a guy, from a guy's perspective, with dating, you go, okay, I want to be uh, as pro woman as possible. And, you know, women's choice, women's first, X, Y, Z. And I go Ooh. after after Sarah, and Sarah's like, man, Paul is a punk because he is too extra with this. But then you go after maybe a Janine, and you're trying to date her, and she's like, this is the best thing ever. So now you have, like, well, I started off with maybe a Sarah, and she was like, you're a super punk. So then you try to readjust. And you go to Janine, and she's like, you're a jerk. How dare you? And you're like, wait, what works? What is the, is there, so, it's not a general rule. So it's like that, that could be Now, so, so when you share this with wait. a lot of women, the, then the statement comes, it's not our job to train you. You should be not. a human. And you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it is. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying that that is where it can be confusing because there are... It's not our responsibility. Like, we get correct. to be individuals. We yes. get to want what we want. Yes. It's not our responsibility to make those... Like, the fact... Where did this... Like, we like we come off a factory line. And, correct. And, you know, you just change colors. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not cars. We're, right. we're human so just right. like you like men like different shit women get to like different shit correct and women don't get to be like you guys are so confusing like some of y'all like women to like you know play with your butts and some of you don't like we're so confused I don't how, get how, <laughs> how we play with butts works. oh god some, some of you <laughs> like anal play some of you like nipple tweaking. Like, what are we supposed to do? Um, it's just so this is so confusing. How are we supposed to date? How do we out here in you? these streets with all of, with all of this, these confusing mixed messages? Oh my gosh, it's it's just so much. Yeah, you and your male privilege shit. You and your male privilege bag right now. Hey, listen, like, I I but did I not start off with saying this? You did. Listen. I, you, I mean, you put not that I'm not aware. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. But yeah, I think so, what I would. So I actually what I would, understand where he's coming from slightly, and this is but, not okay. concurrent. No. You have to. Rem this is this is the this is the simplicity of the male mind, right? Wow. At play. Yes. No, oh, seriously. Oh, no, 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 no. Really? Oh, trash. Because they've got they've <laughs> got to have something at all times that is a common denominator that they that they can sink their teeth into and it's like wait you're wanting one thing and you're wanting one thing and you're wanting one thing why can't you all just be this but that's not no, no. Yeah, so that's not even what i'm saying that's not even what i'm saying it's not a matter of i want to have an assembly line approach to women that's not at all what what the conversation is what what I'm saying is, um, I think, okay, this is just true in terms of, I think, human behavior in general. If a thing works and you receive positive reinforcement for it, that's going to be your default or that's going to be the thing that you do, right? So when, and this is, again, male privilege, that's fine. When I hear about different situations, I go, man let's look at the environment that this person came up in. Not that it justifies it, but in terms of understanding some of the thought processes for it. So like, if you are a rapey dude, right? There was a string of, of uh, a lot of times there were like a string of people where it was kind of successful when you did some power play in the workplace thing. Some set a subset of women was like hey you know what? i'm finna do xyz and go ahead and boom, boom 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 now there's a whole deeper issue about where things come from but like i have not met in my personal experience a bunch of dudes who randomly went out and did some things to get a girl or whatever out the rando blue that they didn't receive some kind of feedback on that then they go, okay, I'm gonna repeat that thing, right? Like if I'm doing a thing, I go, man, I wanna, I wanna get a number or I wanna do something. So if I do certain things and I never get numbers, I'm not gonna keep doing that thing, I'm gonna change it up. But if I'm doing a thing and I happen to, I guess, meet women that are okay or have their own 
histories that allow them to be marginalized and respond to these negative things, then I start to believe that like, that's the thing that I'm supposed to do all the time. Now I've got this string and then it's like, whoa, you know, similarly, all right, example, little kids, we talked about little boys not being able to cry like a few episodes back. When you're a little kid, you punch a girl and stuff, and oh, he, you just have a crush on this young lady. And then you hit 17 and they're like, yo, you're abusive, bro. You, if you don't have anybody that talks to you prior to that or you don't have that environment. Sometimes it's like, wait, how did, how come it was okay? Not that it was, but why wasn't yeah. I told like this wasn't cool? since I was like eight, nine, 10. I wonder when I was though, out. like with the example that you're giving about reinforcement, I wonder if that is just, I think that's conditioning. Like I yeah. think that men are, I think it's the difference between hunting and gathering, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. that's what, that's cause that's what I'm hearing you say is like, it's like men are out there and when y'all look at dating and, and the approach to like finding love, then or sex um, um it becomes like a hunt it's all like suddenly gamified and for women we're more conditioned to gather so we we pick the fruit we examine the fruit we realize that the fruit is bruised and we throw that motherfucker away <laughs> like i think that's that I that's think that, that self-awareness thing yeah, yeah it is but you i think that is here. but i also think I also think that men need more, and we, again, this goes back to balance and the masculine and the feminine. Like, I yep. think men need, like, men will hunt, they'll shoot anything and then figure the rest of it, figure it out later. And that's not exact, like, that's not a good long term strategy. Yep. Um, so, yeah, you, y'all got to learn how to examine the fruit. But, and I mean, the other piece of it is, is, I mean, now we're getting into ethics and morality, which, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, I think we, we, we need a whole re-education in, in both of them, right? It, just because, I, and I'm not saying that this was your point, I think you were just making an example, but if you've always done something um, without there being any reprimand, it's quite likely it was wrong when you initially did it correct when you yeah. actually got caught on it you know what i mean so like there's this whole idea that um it's okay until some other kind of like uh wormhole in the social sphere happens and it's no longer okay it was just like if you punched a girl initially you were already wrong you were an abuser then um and you're an abuser equally you know at 18. i mean i i think to your point though, Paul, there is, there's a slippery slope in a lot of this because there is, there is some culpability on the part of women. So on, you know, in some way, men have been allowed to carry on like this for a long time. They've been like that in our families. They've been like that in society, period. And, but there are certainly instances in which, you know, women allowed for certain things we'll never know what those reasons are. I've certainly seen women accept, you know, lewd kind of responses and, and touching and all that sort of stuff and, and invited it and seemed quite happy with what they were getting, um, which would then send a message to the males that were involved that somehow that's an acceptable thing. But, you know, one group of women, one, one little, sample size of women doesn't necessarily mean the whole conglomerate is down with OPP. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the problem. Like, if I have an experience with one man in this space and time, that is just the experience I'm having with that man in this space and time. I don't necessarily right. extrapolate that, that outcome to all subsequent men I'm going to have that experience with. I mean, there is some expectation we carry from men to men, but we more or less know each one is a whole new experience. Um, and I guess some of what the frustration is on the women's end of things is kind of like, you guys want an, a consistent something in every single experience with a woman, and then it leaves us feeling like we've got to regress towards the mean. And that mean is whatever it is for the time. Sometimes it looks, it's never, well, hasn't been an intelligent 
woman of any kind of body type in a really long time. But as of present, it's like, you know, plastic boobs, big ass, Instagram beauty, right? Like that's the regression towards the mean. And so you have women that are like, oh, that's what y'all are after. That's, that's the thing. Okay, cool. See, and I think, and that's interesting to hear you to say like, like, you know, there's this regression to the mean, um, and that's the kind of pressure because um, I would think, I mean, at least from my my thinking about it, it's like, it's not necessarily that you think every woman is the same. It's just that you have a base to start from, right? Like, if I, if I start off like, okay, usually I say what's up or hi, my name is so, so on, that might be my baseline. And so I may learn differences later on, but if I, if I kind of set up an initial uh, you know, reading or something, and it receives regular favorable response, then I'm going to go, hey, this is a cool response to give. I don't think that if you were abusive in these situations, that it wasn't wrong because of that, but you might not know that, right? And I think that we're seeing that, like, even when we look at some of these older cases, where there were certain things that were culturally acceptable, though they were wrong, right, in the 50s and 60s, now super unacceptable um but at that time that was what people that was that was what people were doing you know what i mean those were the bell-bottom pants that's what we were doing we we're getting dressed in the dark in the 80s like this is how we live life and so now you're like oh wait things need to coordinate it's like oh it's a little different and so i think that i think um i think that when as as men like we don't evolve and we don't listen and grow that's where you get a lot of the horrible things. Um, and I think that that's a lot of times where maybe we meet differently in, in that in-between space because um, it doesn't translate very well or maybe it translates too slowly on our end. And I think that that also gets back to our conversation in terms of self-care and self-awareness because um, if you you know, as, as Sarah pointed out, like if you're doing this examining thing, but we're growing up in a culture of hunting and now you're, you're expecting gatherer or hoping for gatherer interactions as well from a hunter who has only hunted and didn't think until he was in his like mid to late twenties that maybe we should also pick up the skill of gathering for ourselves. Also, there's going to be that kind of disconnect too. So, um, it's, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Very different, definitely interesting. Hmm. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And I don't, you know, like I don't even have the answers for like, cause it's like you can go back and forth as to who's culpable. Oh yeah, and, I mean, and I think team effort. the more you debate that, the more you see that, you know, everybody's at fault, I think. Just a, just a bit, just a bit. Yeah. Some more than others, but we're all at fault. Put it down. So, but uh, all of this to say that Paul McNeil supports of those women is always trying to grow. So let's just, <laughs> let's just Yo, we appreciate always, that. Always we do grow. need the doc for that. We do. Always trying to grow. So you you do your say. best. You do your. I best. do. I try. I try. I'm aware of my privilege, and I'm down to learn from from others. See, that's, but that's half the battle. I don't think people realize. I've always, I've often said that I will take a, a outright racist over somebody who's unaware of their racist ways. Mm -hmm. And people are, oh, that's real. why? Because the racist at least admits, they know. They know they're cognizant, they're making that decision. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, right? Yeah. But the person who is just like, no, I'm your ally. I'm not racist. I see, I've got black color. people in my family. That person's dangerous <laughs> as fuck. Mm -hmm. And I want no parts of you. I no. mean, that's why I like that's why I like the South. I'm just saying, like it's nice then. I mean, these metro cities in the South, it'd be questionable now because people are starting to feel like they're big cities but nice country towns right outside you know i know exactly what i'm dealing with it's great better the devil you know than the one you do not or can't figure out mm -hmm. that's my thing mm -hmm. yep true. true indeed good job. okay so before we go one quick last question 
Mm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Maybe that'll be another thing. I'm okay. Women are awesome. Women are amazing. I I think that it's going to be amazing the rest of this month. We're going to have wonderful discussions. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. <laughs> mm. Wait. <laughs> the glasses. I can't. Mm. So, troops, what you got going on? Oh, we are still in Black Logs Matter and through the end of the month. This is week eight. Black women leaders we love. Yes. Yay. Oh, yes. And Shout out Maxine Waters. I'll be at Work Human in about a week. March 18th through the 21st in the Let's day. go. We out Let's here. Let's go. We out here. I got and, my team ready. And I'll be. Yes, let's do this. And I'll be my at laminate my, my kid's career my day pass. tomorrow. And oh, I'm, that's cool. Oh, I know. I'm far too stressed, stressed out about the whole thing. Like, I, I'm speaking to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. It shouldn't feel like this much pressure. But, um, and my daughter daughter is actually coming to the session whereas my son was like I don't want to do what you do I'm not wasting my career day on you I'm going to see this uh, he's going to yeah he's going to see the robots that can disarm bombs he was like I signed up for that session oh, that's pretty like, cool actually I'm sorry it is pretty cool that's, that's if pretty I would cool. go to that session if I didn't have my <laughs> 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 that sounds true like you, you started that conversation off and I was like oh man that's uh then you were like robots and bombs I was like words so so that's my life right now good stuff Ooh. um let's see i had a webinar last week um uh, and so just been following up with that and um talking with different people regarding the the topics of the webinar and so just reaching out trying to find uh, you know, different clients that are looking to improve their cybersecurity plans or do some kind of cyber awareness training. Uh, and then also, um, I've just been in giving like some discounts on marketing analytics work. So that's been my biggest focus the last week or two. And then I had some like personal stuff. So that kind of put a little bump in my, in my, uh, you know, I guess work the week. Mojo. Um, but you know, videos coming soon and whatnot and content. Mm. So just, you know, just keeping on. Oh, and I'm pushing these shirts. Uh, I mean, these, uh, mugs, uh, Miss CEO mugs and Miss CEO mugs. We out here. Um, uh, and some painting. Merch. That's been fun. Paintings? Yeah. I didn't, oh, I didn't show you the painting of like the blues singer. So I've been you working with I'm sorry. Did you, you paint it? Yet? No, no, no. I uh, I have I I work with an artist, oh. and so he paints. And so we've been helping him. Uh, he paints his sketches, and so I've been helping him uh, market his stuff. And so he has this really amazing painting, which I actually was like, I'm gonna share my screen before the end of the show, and I forgot to pull it up. But uh, it's like a this blues jazz singer, and he calls it 1933. It's really cool. He's got some other cool stuff, but that's like one of my favorites. So we've been pushing that throughout the last month. Um, he's he's selling the digital screen canvas prints. Uh, nice. So that's been pretty sweet. You have I've to been getting into the you artist world. Drop that in the chat in the group. Yeah, in the group chat. I will. I will. You can check it out. What do I have going on? I'm getting ready to wrap up my my uh, TT Power Circle. We got like whoa, two more whoa. sessions. Me and Sarah's going on next week. Tell yeah. these ladies about what it's like to be a speaker out in these streets. Yeah. yeah. No, we're in the streets. Don't. I'm ready to here. jump. I'm ready to jump out here. I want to learn. What's it like to be a speaker? You gonna learn? Oh, you gonna learn? Yeah, I'm, I get to come. I was joking. Are yeah, you no, you can't come. Wow. Oh, you're not coming to the power wow. circle. Wow. wow, who's talking from a place of privilege right now, Janine? <laughs> Discriminatory behavior. But, no, no, no. Oh, Look, oh, oh, I, yeah. I, now you're in your, now you're I, in your I, fragility I bag. You're in your privilege fragility bag. Oh, right. no, that's I a I'm trying to be an ally. That's all I'm saying. 
I saw a need and I, I created a space in the universe for us to come together and thrive, collaborate. Yeah. Exhibit social sensitivity. I'm trying to yes. be, I'm trying to be an ally. Yes. So you could be an ally and not be in this in the circle. Indeed. Holy oh, possible. You and you and your fri- yeah, you and your fragility. You and your privilege fragility right now. Fight. It's okay. <laughs> so I don't know what that means. I got a GED. What's that mean? You got a what? I got a GED. What's that mean? I don't know. Well, what. I, I'll drop that in the chat too. Exactly. I appreciate you. After. So I appreciate you. Anyhow, so, yeah. I'm in the mode of, you know, deciding how we proceed with that. Um, working on board work and I'm in the middle of a campaign still and and then Spain. You know. Hey. Espana, Espana, Espana. Let's go. Yeah. Yes. Ole, ole. Yeah. That was my attempt at flamenco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plotting my moves. I'm plotting my moves. That's all my, that's where my brain is. Wrap up I the work get, and get on the plane. That's where my head is at. I want to go, I want to go to Spain uh, again so I can do tourist stuff with people because I didn't do a lot of tourist stuff when I went the last time. I did a conference and then I did, did a lot of uh, local people shenanigans and I will leave it at that for now. After after show, okay. The, the after show. <laughs> no. Yes. No, I'm gonna do all the tourist things and all the little Airbnb experiences, and I'm trying to plot my way to getting to Morocco. Since I'm right there, I've discovered. Ooh. I'm like, oh, I can be in Morocco too. Try that. That's dope. That's we'll dope. see. Stay tuned. But thank you guys for tuning in to our ninth what episode and we will be back next week for episode 10 guys how is this possible 10 episode yeah. 10 talking yeah. about yeah. women's reproductive health i, I, I think it's think just it right it's it's a, it's you know, perfect. perfect i feel like there's no other way for me to fall on a different kind of so i was like Oh, this is a great tenth episode let's 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 do that let's go let's go the distance i timed that just right just i see right. it i uh, it's all right. I might still come up with our shoes next week. We don't know. I might, I might, uh, shoe. Oh, oh, shoe. I'm allergic. Uh huh. Yeah. It's all right. I'm okay, sure that there's good education. We can, we can pull somebody. Maybe I could get a sub pinch hitter in there. Um, but no, I'm excited. I'm also excited to see who's wa- re watching and are people commenting and stuff when you put it up? I haven't. Wow. Well, are we getting replays and stuff? Um, let me say let watching. me say bye 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 <laughs> bye, bye. bye man. <laughs>